everyone. Thanks for joining to Sims Workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. So today we're going to be talking about the Daughters of Izdihar. Um, this is a first in a duology, and let me just start by saying I love this book. Um, I'm going to say this. If you are a fan of Avatar The Last Airbender or Legend of Korra, you absolutely have to read this book. It was so good. Um, it follows Nihal and Georg. I always want to call her Georgina, but I feel like that's not the right pronunciation for her name. Um, she is Nihal is is very privileged. I'll say this: these two characters are absolute foils of one another. Let's start with that. Um, Nihal comes from a very privileged line of life. She doesn't have to work. She really wants to hone her gift as a water weaver. She wants to be a fighter. She wants to be more than just a rich wife and a hostess. She wants to do something. She is rather spoiled. Um, I will say she is a little narcissistic and egotistical, but I think that has more to do with her upbringing and just her family kind of, I mean, they spoil her. There's no way around it. They do indeed spoil her. So, she's, she does grow on you. She does go, grow on you as a character, especially as she begins to explore her power and explore her sexuality. It turns out, you know, she she really doesn't like men at all. And when she discovers that, she, yes, indeed, she does prefer women, um, there's a change in her. But there's also another change when she joins the suffrage movement who call themselves the Daughter of Izdihar. She's learning to stand up for something and fight for something that is bigger than herself. And I think that that's really powerful and it's impactful as far as the storytelling is concerned because all her life she's been all about me, 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 me. And again, she's spoiled. You know, her family hasn't really given her any restrictions other than to say, no, we don't want you, you know, to use your power like that. They want her to treat her power like it's a parlor gift. Especially because there is a country they're trying to make peace with who views anyone who was born with any of these elemental powers as kind of, I don't want to say abominations because that seems like incorrect, um, but she wants to do more. And so she grows in that respect. She is a little, she's more aggressive. She's a more aggressive personality especially compared to Georgina, who, um, she is an earth weaver and she's, she's more passive. She's kinder. She's gentler. So these are two characters who are perfect foils for one another and they're brought together through a lot of circumstances in their lives. These are two women who probably would have never crossed each other's paths, but they both want to be a part of the Daughters of Izdihar. And they both want to stand up for something bigger than themselves. They want equality. They want acceptance. They want the chance and choice to be able to make decisions for themselves. Georgina, she just wants to be, to live as a woman without judgment. She wants to love um, whom she loves without judgment. She doesn't like the societal restrictions placed on women, you know, and I really do enjoy this commentary. I think it is really relevant to today's um, current climate when it comes to equality and women's rights. I think it's valid, and I also love the fantastical element to it, and I love that Avatar the Last Feeling feeling that I got when, you know, Earth Weavers water weavers, air weavers, and you know what? Some of them can even be blood weavers. Ooh, that was so good. I was just like, ooh, all kinds of tingles. Like, this is amazing, this is amazing. Uh, I once had a teacher 
Um, just a nice little segue there. <laughs> I once had a teacher tell me that genre fiction is not real fiction. And to this day, I mean, I think you've heard me comment on that many times because it still bothers me to this day. I still think it's absolute BS and it's absolutely ridiculous because this is a novel. It's a fantastical novel. It is genre fiction. It is fantasy, but it's dealing with women's rights and equality. It has its own interpretation of a suffrage movement. You can see the allusions to current um, country, to current countries and religious status quo. You know, you can see the commentary. It's not like it's hiding it. So I always think that that's absolutely ridiculous that my t professor, Pamela Painter, by the way, old white woman, um, once said, genre fiction is not real fiction. It's just, just because you don't read genre fiction doesn't mean you can discredit it. Um, you really can't. I, I mean, even in the 1980s, the Dragonland series, rereading those books, I'm like, wow, these deal with race a lot. They deal with um, racism. Like, is it black or white? No, it's, you know, different races, different cultures. I think genre fiction has always been a really good medium for telling and dealing with real issues and tackling real subjects. I think in any, in some ways, it makes it a little bit more accessible to some readers because you can draw those illusions quite easily. And that's what you can do here in this book. You know, you can definitely see the way the characters are fighting for equality and struggling to have their voices heard and how their actions are manipulated and twisted to fit a certain narrative that is not theirs. So I quite like this book. Um, I'm really excited for the sequel. I really want to see what's going to happen with these two characters uh, and their journeys because Georgina has always feared her power, but by the end of it, she's finally embracing her abilities as a earth weaver instead of letting her emotions get the better of her. And I really like that. Again, there's lots of character development. I love the pacing. Um, that some of those moments near the end were jaw dropping, especially the revelation of a blood weaver. I was, whoo, I was, I was hooked, hooked, absolutely hooked. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give this book four out of four out of five stars. I do think it's a really good story. Highly recommend it. Um, I will include links in the description below if, or in the description of the podcast, if you so desire. And on that note, please don't forget to like this podcast, share it with all your book-loving friends, and share it, like the podcast, subscribe to it, and share it with all your book-loving friends. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, happy reading.